Today's ATEM mini tip isn't really a tip actually, it's more like a demo with kind of half of a tip thrown in. Basically, I have a piece of gear in the studio right now that's not normally here, and I wanted to show you what it can do with the ATEM that's a, a bit unique. It's pretty cool. Let's go check it out. In the previous tip, I showed you how you can control a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera with the ATEM software control, and in the case of the ATEM Mini Extreme or ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, also with the hardware. There was one facet of that that I did not show you though, and that was zoom. You see, to control a camera's zoom, you actually have to have a powered zoom lens. Otherwise, there's no mechanics or engines to actually move the zoom. Well, today I've got one of those zoom lenses here in the studio. This is a Canon cinema, big, huge, honking, motorized lens. It's, it's pretty cool, actually. And this lens has a powered zoom function on it, meaning that you can control it with a link controller or any other number of devices, but you can also control it from the ATEM software control. Now, there's no hardware buttons on the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO to control the zoom. This is all in software, so let me just show you how this works. You'll notice over here on the camera control, there is a zoom rocker. And we're looking through that lens right here, and it's at the widest position. So if I just slowly rotate this up towards the T for telephoto, you'll see that it zooms in. Now, this particular lens is actually par focal, which means if we zoom in all the way, and then let's autofocus that, let it focus right on my eye there. Now it should hold that focus point. I'll try not to move my head as I zoom it out. And as I hold the rocker down all the way, it zooms quickly, or up all the way, it zooms quickly. If I rotate it just a little bit below the line there, you'll see that I can make it zoom quite a bit more slowly and even ramp it up as I move my finger down to make it go a little bit faster or a little bit slower. So you have this level of zoom control, again, only with very specific lenses. Now, of course, this Canon lens isn't the only lens in the world that does this. Any powered zoom lens that is, in this case, an EF mount, or in the case of one of the Micro Four Thirds size pocket cinema cameras, a Micro Four Thirds mount, which would include a couple of Panasonic and a couple of Olympus lenses, not many, but there's a few, you can do the same thing. Now, I used to use a Blackmagic Studio camera, which is basically the SDI Pro version of this little pocket cinema camera here that is meant for broadcast situations, along with a Olympus power zoom lens. And with that, I really didn't have any way to control that over macros, which I always found a little bit disappointing. In getting ready to record this video, I actually was doing a little bit of research and I came across a question that I had posted on the Blackmagic forums years ago. And in there, somebody was talking about how some lenses do actually have certain levels of zoom control. And it really is going to vary from lens to lens. And while I don't know if I've figured out everything that you can do with this lens, I did figure out something. It's a little weird, but it's kind of cool. So I just want to show that to you. I'm going to go ahead and open up the macros palette and I'll create a new macro here. We're just going to pop it in that first place and I'll just call this zoom hit record, and then I'm going to take the zoom button and I'm going to move it. That's it. I'll stop recording. Now let's go ahead and save this. I'll just call this zoom test, put it on the desktop, and I'm only going to save the macros. Now let's go to the desktop and check this out. There's the file that I just created. And you'll see in here, if we expand this out, that the macro control did recognize something. Camera control fixed point 16 bit address one, category zero, parameter nine, action set, values zero. So it recorded something. Well, let's go back over here and see if it actually did anything. We'll open the macros and I'll reposition the zoom where it was before. Right on my ear, perfect. Hit run, recall and run and hit zoom, and nothing happens. I'll go ahead and do this manually. Let's go back out to wide, hit the zoom button again nothing's happening. So triggering the macro as it is now, even though we know that something was there, isn't actually doing anything. But I was looking at the code and I saw that the value is set to zero and that kind of surprised me. A value shouldn't be zero, it should be something. So I tried a bunch of different numbers and here's what I came up with. Between zero and one, at least on this lens, and again, I can't speak to other lenses here, but at least on this lens, a value of zero to one controls the zoom speed. Now, it doesn't control how far it will zoom to. If that's possible, I have not figured that one out. But it will control the speed. So the smaller the number, the slower it zooms. The higher the number, up to one, the faster it will zoom. And if you go with a negative number, it will zoom out. A positive number will zoom in. So I've already saved a bunch of these. I'm just going to go ahead and open up my extra macros here. This is just a bunch of macro code that I saved. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that into here. I'm just going to drop it in over the one that we just made, index zero. So now you see I have them index zero through nine. 
and you'll see that I've named them the same as their number values. So this one's name is 0 0.0001 with a value of 0 0.001, and then one less zero to 0 0.001, 0 1, 0.1, and then one, and then negative going the other direction, all the way down to negative one. So let's try this out. I'll go ahead and save this. I'll just do a save as, and we'll call this Zoom Test 2. Switch back over to the ATEM software control. Let's go to the Restore menu and select that file, test number two, restore that. Macros are all that are in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the macro list so you can see it populating there. There it is. And we've got all those new macros in place. Okay, we're on the run mode. So let's start with zoom one. So that's gonna be a positive zoom. That's gonna zoom all the way in as fast as it goes. And there it is. It's got my eye back into position here. And let's do zoom minus one as fast as it goes all the way out. Now let's do zoom 0.1 and you'll see that it is now zooming in a bit more slowly. Zoom minus 0.1 will zoom out a bit more slowly. And then I can do 0 0.01, a bit more slowly still. Now I will point out that you can't actually stop these because it's issued a single command. I don't see a way to stop it. So if you're doing this, it's just gonna zoom until it runs out of room to zoom, but it does work. Let's try minus 0.001. And this seems to be the slowest that we can get. If we go to the 0 0.0001, it doesn't appear to make any difference on here. If I hit that 0 0.0001, it does nothing at all. The minus 0 0.001 is the slowest that we can do. And of course you could pick any number in between, presumably, and make it work. So uh, there you go. Again, more a demo. Most of us aren't gonna run out and buy lenses like this, but if you do have a lens like this and you want to control the zoom, you kind of sort of can. Again, not a huge amount of control, but it's there. In most cases, you're probably just gonna use the rocker in the software to do the zoom, but if you want to build a macro around it, you can. That's it for this mini tip slash demo slash half tip. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was kind of fun to figure out once I got my hands on this lens. I gotta send this thing back tomorrow, so this is the last I'll have of this one. Thanks again, as always, for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, please be sure you do. And of course, as always, if there's a tip that you want to see, make sure you let me know in the comments below, and I'll do my best to get to it. Mm -hmm.